Okay, hello, Headhunting Housewives. It's your recruiter, Diane O'Brien. How are you? I hope I this set on here okay. Uh, it's Thursday afternoon, it's almost lunch, and I thought I had a lunch meeting, which I do, but it's now not till after one. So I have a little time I can steal here. And um, the reason I'm doing this is I have a Zoom call with y'all tomorrow. Um, however, um, I am worried it's gonna get canceled because I have a client call that might push it out of the way. And I'm trying not to do that because I want to commit to these Friday Zooms for free to help everybody. So just in case I cancel, I'm gonna just postpone it until next week. It would probably be Tuesday or Thursday. Um, but I want to give a little call right now to answer some of the questions. Sorry, I'm looking down, but I want to find on my phone. I actually put this, I took a picture of the questions so I could quickly find it. Now I can't find it. So Joanna had some really good, great questions I want to talk to. And um, and again, we'll have live sessions more as we go further, but just in case I want to get this out there to help answer now and to help all of you. I know last week we focused on Lisa, I had some really great questions. I haven't published the video yet because I want to get people's approval for training when I'm using them in the video. Um, and then later I might not have as many people on live times, not having to get approvals, and I don't want to make anyone unhappy. <laughs> so you might end up seeing me here, and I'll have everybody listening or, or adding in. But um, okay, so the questions I want to cover right now, the first question for both Joanna and Rachel, I think they're partners in their own business, recruiting business, um, is how do you get connected to the right person, decision maker for the hiring? So this is a question I get a lot um, from uh, recruiters. Uh, if you're brand new, it's a little bit different than if you've been doing it for a while, so I'll cover it kind of from two bases. Um, if you're brand new to recruiting, you're just trying to find that first client. Obviously, start with reading that book, Work From Home Head Under, because it tells you a lot in my book about that. So this question I'll go deeper on, but that gives the basics of how you kind of go online. You can go like on Indeed or Monster, any of the job boards, find out where the jobs are, work backwards to see who is hiring is one way. Um, another way then is to actually on LinkedIn, if you know your niche, I mean, hopefully you start out knowing what niche you're going to be in and what kind of candidates you're looking to hire. From there, you can find the companies right in your area, even though we can hire nationally, it's often helpful to find who are the companies doing what you're hiring for right in your area so you could meet for a cup of coffee. So find them, and LinkedIn is awesome for that. So utilize LinkedIn to find out who those decision makers are and reach out to them. A lot of times, a little trick is easier. Let's say you're re reaching out to a CEO. It's often easier to be giving them something than um, you know, just saying, hey, use me for a recruiter. Find out what they're looking for right now and send a candidate blind, take all the information off, or say, or send a marketing email. Um, or it could be a LinkedIn quick message saying, hey, I saw you're looking for a VP of marketing. I had the perfect person, bullet point, bullet, bullet, bullet point, bullet point, send over and get a bite that way. It works really well. So they're called marketing emails, phishing. So that can be via email, that can be via LinkedIn. Um, you know, good old cold calling, of course, back in the day, that's all we had. But now with LinkedIn, I barely, very rarely make cold calls. It's more of a warm call after we start talking online. That's at least worked for me. I know a lot of recruiting companies do not teach that. They just want people on the phones, on the phones. I just don't find it as effective anymore. Um, so try those routes. But the other thing I'll get back to is kind of right back to what I talked about with Lisa last week is that um, face to face goes a long way always. So find those local conferences right in your area that um, are hiring in the niche you want to hire and start meeting these people. Get your business cards. Uh, for, so for Joanna, for you and Rachel, go find the conference nearby. It won't cost you much money. It'll be a fun day out anyway. Um, and you'll meet people that way for sure. And then we'll talk about when you get all those business cards, because you'll get a lot, um, how you come back and actually find out the real people in there to make clients. Um, and that actually leads me into your second question. It says, uh, we both still work full time. So you guys are starting this recruiting thing in the evenings. Um, and how can you have strategies around that? And that is very tough. I've helped a lot of women in the past that did this on the side. They want to start making some money before it gets going. Um, a couple of thoughts there. I'm going to talk about sourcing for you all. But um, since you already have your own business up and going, I just left the conference thought. Um, that's a great way because those conferences can often be in the evenings. There's all kind of cocktail hour conferences or any things in the weekends. Um, you know, it's unlike just the job fairs where you're going, people are trying to get jobs. This is often a conference in the niche that you're hiring. Let's say it's this cannabis industry that's booming right now. Um, let's say there's a cannabis conference right here in Philadelphia and you can go to that and um, start seeing who's hiring with, with um, companies. And it's a nice little niche because there's hardly any recruiters in that area right now. So that's an area that I'm going to be targeting. Um, I'm already in it, but I'm going to continue to target that more. I still do healthcare, but I consider cannabis healthcare, like I mentioned. So that's a great idea for all of you looking for a little niche to get into nationally if I were you. 
Um, so do that, okay? And that'd be a great way to not you know, break into your work day, but you'll do things in the evenings, keeps it fun, get together, all those cocktail things. Later, you can start hosting and sponsoring some of those when you get the good employers. I can talk about how to throw together a fast party inexpensively, even get someone else to sponsor it, and you can be the one making those connections. Um, I have a friend, Jeff, uh, a CEO that does Hire Ascend, his company connecting IT companies to people that are hiring them, and it works fantastic. So there's a lot of good ideas there for a model. Um, and number three, how to prioritize candidates and clients. I'm making sure you can't see my credit card number. <laughs> my phone. Um, how to prioritize candidates and clients. Okay, so that's a good one that everyone struggles with, right? So how do you prioritize them? For me, it, it depends again where you are. If you're a business owner, like the people I'm mainly talking to right now, um, your clients always come first, right? Because without the clients, the candidates don't pay you. Um, the clients pay you. So you kind of always go where the money is with that in business, especially. Um, so again, I'm talking later to the sourcers and recruiters just that are getting jobs from um, their company or another recruiter and they're for small business, um, then of course you're trying to prioritize just your candidates and how do you do that? You might have 10 jobs on your desk, right? So, but let me first speak to if you're prioritizing between both, first you're gonna start with the clients and what I like to do, I just like having space set on my calendar for everything in my day. I think through the years, what's got me better and better at time management and being able to do a whole lot more in a lot less time is just having time on my calendar for everything that I wanna do. So I'm not stressed out and never like kinda I won't say never, sometimes I still get out of control, but you know, it's everything's planned for, um, you know, like for today, for instance, I'm meeting um, my, my meetings with friends, right? So with business, I'd look at those in meeting. I don't always share it's friends, but um, these are my girlfriends. I make sure they're on my calendar. Um, we try always do once a month ends up being once a quarter a lot, but they're important. And you go, I'm crazy busy right now. And I had to move some really important client calls uh, later today for my friends. I'm doing so because that's important. And I know I'll just say it, it's going to be a boozy lunch. I know these girls, right? And so normally I would like block out that time on my calendar for like, it would have been like 12 to three and I can take calls at like four or five. Um, after all the years of meeting these ladies, I have given up. I know I'm going to come home after talking a lot and having a lot of fun and laughs and probably drinking a little too much. I'm going to probably need a nap. This is the way it goes. I'll probably won't be in my office. I'll be in the sunroom sofa for at least an hour, right? And then I'll come back to my office probably like at 4.30. <laughs> But I won't do any calls. I'll just be trying to get my head in the game. So I'm just saying that because I plan my calendar. I'm not going to be all stressed out that oh, I'll meet my friends for lunch and I have these big calls today. You know, I push them to tomorrow morning. Um, maybe I'll still take them later this evening if I feel like it. But I just had everything planned out. So and even again, moving a client call that was an important client call. But um, still keep your priorities, ladies. Right, and your friends are everything and family and all that good stuff. So what I do, I usually try to keep my clients um, in the morning because I, you know, whenever you work best, if you're a night person, this might be totally different for you, but find out when you're at your strongest. We all have different timetables. For me, I wasn't always a morning person, but I've kind of evolved to be that way. And I get a lot done in the morning. So I get up really early, as you know, these podcasts are usually recorded, not at around noon, but more like 5, 36 in the morning. So I can push one out to you all. Um, but after my morning, after I kind of get the family out and going and coffee with my husband, and get my mind straight on how I'm um, organizing my day and um, anything like that, any exercise and things I want to do, or the dog walks. Um, the next thing my mind goes to is clients, right? So I have a lot of candidates that are constantly coming my inbox, right? Candidates are calling me all the time. Don't pick up the phone. Don't just get on email and start talking to candidates. Take time and take a breath and focus on your priorities. And what's your first priority? Your client, right? So think about the clients that you need to get back to first thing in the morning, do those emails first. So I probably put it out three of those out this morning. Um, it was like one of the capital investors, a CEO, um, and then a COO that I'm working for locally. So I put three of those emails out early, just follow up stuff. Usually I'm, I'm talking weekly to them only um, for like reviews, to let them know what's going on with the hiring. But when there's um, any additional placements given, being given to me or negotiations, or they ask me to assess somebody extra, um, you have to kind of um, take in account for that. They have true accounting for that. I have an invoice for that. So tomorrow, if I do my invoices tomorrow afternoon, that's what I put on Friday afternoon often. That often runs into like after hours, so I'm busy. Um, but again, that's not an excuse when I say I'm busy. You do want to try to keep your calendar as much as you, as you can. Um, so clients I do first and then other than those like kind of midweek, you know, let's say Thursday that I had to follow up with somebody, normally my clients are, um, Friday and Monday, just to give you an idea of how I schedule myself. So I basically, um, 
what I do, uh, Friday I'm kind of doing a recap of the week and all the hiring that I did for a client. And usually I'll send a week review out, um, not all clients, but a lot of the time, especially new ones, they know that I'm, you know, what I'm doing for them. Um, and usually it's early in the morning, I'll send a little recap of what's been going on that week, like maybe how many people I submitted to them and how many face-to-face -face interviews, loose ends. I'll just look at my week. I'm like, okay, I sent these three candidates on Tuesday, I haven't heard anything. So I do a quick recap so we can all get back on the same page. Here's my puppy, Tucker. He's gonna make me lose my train of thought and knock over my stuff. Come here, Tucker. Come see the people. Um, come up here. He's gonna knock my computer over. Come right here. I'm trying to come up to say hello. Come on up. Hello. Okay, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna probably knock out the video. <laughs> I just can't help it. I can't. How can you not stop work when this kind of cuteness comes to the office? Do you wanna talk? Can you speak? He doesn't, he doesn't like when I'm gonna be leaving for lunch. He likes to tear things up. He's still a puppy. Um, so you're getting me off my train of thought, Tucker. Totally. Same this is going to happen, but I'm going to have to pet the dog here in a minute. have to pet the dog. Oh my God. He's just so cute. Look, you're on camera. I think he sees himself. So, um, sorry about that. Just fast forward for me today. So what was I saying? So clients, let me try to take this back to me without turning it off. Okay. So, um, what I do for clients. So basically, usually Friday and Monday, Friday I do a recap, and usually it's with, I don't want to say lower level managers, there's like high level, mid level, low level, but the people that you're the hiring managers, let's say, the ones that are that like you're sending candidates to and they're doing your hiring for you, they're the ones making decisions on the great people you sent their way. Um, I like to recap them on Friday because they're kind of in the weeds with me and um, they're the ones, you know, interviewing and, and getting updates. So I want to do a quick recap. But then on Monday morning is usually when I do the recap to the C-level players. Um, so if I have like multiple managers, I'm doing that on Friday. And then Monday morning, I'm getting out to maybe their bosses who I've maybe been contracted with. Um, and that's if you're doing big teams or even like if you're doing a contract where you're hiring for an, a C-level player, you might be talking to the CEO um, you know, by Friday, like I have that plan tomorrow morning. In fact, the guy I pushed back today. Um, and then Monday morning, I'll probably follow up with his capital partner. That's one of the big investors to get more high level, how the call went, where's hiring going now with this company. So I hope that's helpful on how you prioritize clients because this, this just needs to be on your calendar. Um, but just let it, let you be controlling that and not them controlling you. I'm always saying that to people where, um, and this, I can speak right to the candidate side now, because basically, um, the candidates, they'll drive you a little more crazy, right? Because you, you have a lot of them coming towards you. So you might have five, you know, one, two, three, four, five clients at a time that you're working with. Um, but you're gonna have hundreds of candidates coming through your desk, right? And it can get really difficult between different databases and organizing it and scheduling it. And there are a lot of little tricks I'm going to teach you um, to make your life so much easier. I took on way too much work when I was younger. I just want to do everything to help everybody. So I would find the candidates and I would do all the assessments and I would help write the job description and I would figure out the candidate profile and I wouldn't add any of that to my fee, like which was just for finding the right person. All that's extra now. That's my, my, my price went up through the years and you have to remind new clients of that as they throw more and more workload on you. All that workload is worth money. So don't get so involved with busy, busy, busy and they're throwing you more stuff to kind of never take a breath and say, wait a minute, this is what I'm doing for my client. This is what my pay scale is. And that might be a weekly touch point. It might be monthly, it might be annually if it's a long time client. So just make sure you're in control of that and control of your time and your money. Don't let it control you. Same thing with databasing. Um, uh, that's where I started with this. Wherever you are in your database, don't, um, you know, so many, if you're in like a churn and burn recruiting organization, which you don't want to be in, but you'll know if you get into one, I, I um, was trying to help one recently and then decided I didn't like the culture they had going. Um, but it was kind of, they were turning and burning through people. I had no idea how quickly when the CEO called me to come to work for him I had, or to help them, I had no idea that they were running through a lot of young college kids. These kids come in, you're a recruiter and you're filling their database and they're paying you minimal. Um, and it's all about make phone calls, phone calls, phone calls. They want their database full, but it's not gonna serve you. So even if you go for an employer, still serve yourself first, right? You have to you know, do that first and then you wanna serve your client or your employer. Um, and definitely don't be a servant to, um, sorry, at the, my window, the front streets out there, I thought I saw somebody coming to the door. Um, so don't be at service to your database or your ATS, that should serve you. If you find you're in there all day databasing and putting phone numbers or people's names and you're trying to get it in the database or what you're doing to prove what you're doing, you're doing in that wrong, don't. It should only be there to serve you. Put minimal stuff in it, it's for what you need to get it done and that's that. 
I had a great, um, I guess kind of manager. I kind of went to work for people. Uh, you have kind of bosses at different times, whether I'm contracted or, or not contracted. And, uh, the higher ups wanted to do all the databasing stuff, right? Cause it was their company and you get it. Um, now I was trying to learn that side of business a little bit more. And she was awesome. She's like, Diane, this is just for you. Who cares that everyone else in the company is seeing it, which is true. Make this your own baby. This is what pays you. You, this is your tool. And so true. It kind of reminded me of that from back when it was my own ATS for my own company, how I, you know, I, I really don't use them as much as I used to. Um, so it's probably bad, but it hasn't, I always go back to my Excel spreadsheets. Of course I have different systems I used at different times, but what had happened, I had my own and then I even had my father, my father, who's a, um, computer scientist, worked for the government for years, super smart, made my own for me. It was awesome. It was right within my outlook. So my database, I could click buttons and it would write my outlook. I was, it was all my outlook it was awesome. So instead of going to an outside, like a sales force or, um, back then, I can't remember. There were so many, I used bullhorn. And then of course, uh, act. And then there were new ones like a uh, PC file maker and then Aviante and, uh, Lord, just like 10 other ones. And every time I would go work for a new company, they'd have a new ATS. So I had to learn that a little bit. Eventually I'm like, you know, um, it's just easier not to spend too much time with that. I feel like I kept getting plugged back into the matrix. It was like the cord was right there and I had to kind of get in a database and that's not what you want for your life. So I get it's going to feel a little bit like that when you're starting out and you have to keep things organized, but the, what's worked for me, the, the better I get at what I'm doing and, and watching my time and how I want to spend my time, it sure as hell isn't on the computer databasing. It's doing this. I want to talk to you. I want to talk to candidates. I want to talk to clients. I want to make connections happen and make money. So make sure you're spending your time where you want to spend it. So that was a really long winded answer. How long was that? <laughs> to your three questions, uh, Joanna. And that was 16 minutes. So what's great about this, even if I can make my call tomorrow, I'm really trying not to reschedule. I just can't push back my client from today to tomorrow again. So if he wants to talk tomorrow at noon, I'm going to have to. So if I am not on that Zoom call, I am sending you this, Joanna. And then um, if I get your approval, I'll keep it in our um, training for future um, students that want to learn how to have those same questions. Cause I'm finding you're all having the same questions. So we'll do these live calls to get into what we need to, but a lot of this I can answer for you just like this nowadays and we'll save some time. And that way, uh -oh, I'm, uh, my video stopped. Um, and that way, when um, we have time together, you can focus either on more questions or if you want to go deeper. Um, and keep this in mind if we don't speak this week. I'm speaking right to Joanna, Lisa, Rachel, Bridget. Um, if for some reason I got busy and we didn't run the phone to like next Friday, what you can do is, and this is a good thing that I did in my own business when I was working with managers or uh, new clients, I need to remember things I had to ask them. I had a spiral just for them. Of course, your desk might get kind of busy with a bunch of spirals, but I always keep handy in a spiral notebook. They're always like my kids' old spirals in the past 20 years. Where they use like three pages and not the rest of it. So I would save that. <laughs> and then that's where I take my notes. And um, if it's a really important client or you just want to keep it separate in your brain, have a special spiral that you label like Diane questions. If you are going to be working with me um, over, let's say, the next three months, right, you get involved in this 2Q um, program I'm putting together, teach more of you. And then we're gonna have week to week calls. Um, God willing, it might be monthly, but I'm hoping week to week, uh, if I can get the time, I will, we'll figure it out. Um, that basically, instead of during the week, you sending me emails, and it's very attendance, like you have a hot problem, you want to email it to me. Um, but that is tough, because um, I won't see it. I'm busy. Obviously, I have four different email boxes, just, you know, I have kind of different, a lot of things going on other than this uh, mentoring and recruiting. And I manage, um, my home and some, uh, real estate stuff happening right now. Sorry, my dog wants to knock something over. So, um, if you could instead of even email me all during the week, just wait till once a week and send me an email, but wait to send that until all week long, you've gathered your questions in your scroll notebook. And then by the end of the week, just take the top one to send me because <laughs> you do the top three. I've told some of the ladies to start thinking the top three because I want them to really focus on where their needs are. It really helps you because once you're asking the right question, I can answer it. But in the end, you're going to have to ask yourself the question and answer it because everything I just said for your answers, like Joanna, um, hopefully they'll help you because you know what's worked for me, or maybe I'll give you some kind of baselines of what's standard. Like when I did the morning podcast on contracts, you might just need to know what's, what's standard. So if you're brand new to this, I can help with that for sure. But, um, instead of constantly reinventing the wheel or me answering the same question over and over, I'd love to put all these news videos for you all. So I'll answer it for you live, but I want to serve a whole lot more people than just one-on-one. -on -one. So get those questions together and send me the best one by that Friday maybe Thursday night if we're having a call on Friday. And I think we'll work it that way. As I'm kind of thinking and talking out loud, I think that'll work best. Kind of like I do with my clients once a week, right? 
touch base. Sometimes you just need a little inspiration and support, right? And we're here for that too. So I hope this has been really helpful. I did all that in under 20 minutes. I'm proud of myself. So I'm gonna get some work things done before I leave for a late lunch. And um, I will talk to you all very soon, okay? Have a good one, bye.